Greetings, I'm Barrent and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today we're going to be doing a Kickstarter preview of the game Kingdoms of Arcandia, The Seven Realms. This entire playthrough is going to be filled with prototype material, so be aware that this will change as the production goes through after the Kickstarter is completed. If you're interested in what you see, please go check out the Kickstarter. I'll make sure to put a link to it in the description below. And if you're seeing this after the Kickstarter has finished, you could probably still late back it or reach out to the publishers in general and potentially get a copy that way. There's a lot going on in this game. This is only going to be the first chapter, The King, and this game is really only the first book in this big world called Arcandia. Some of the systems you're going to see in this game are we're going to be doing different puzzles. We're going to have talents crafting with supply chains. We could potentially have castle defenses if the monsters hit our castles. We use different fate cards to determine what happens each round. Optional quests, there's side quests even, along with loot cards that you can use to purchase new equipment. We have crafting. We're going to be able to gain mounts. There's so many different things that are going to be happening on. I hope you enjoy the playthrough. If you're excited to see how this game plays, then I need you to meet me at the co-op shop. You start the game by picking out your character and getting them all set up, but I wanted to show you the board because it looks super cool. Look at all these neat features and terrain. It's really panned out so you're not going to see everything, but each one of these is a number that's going to correspond with potentially things spawning into the world. And there's little things all over this that are so detailed and really cool that you can see. And you'll see them as we kind of zoom into where we're actually playing. But I do want to talk about how we get the game ready to go. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our time tracker and place it right up here on the number one. At this point, you're going to see up along the side here the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The reason they're in that in their realms of 6 is usually every 6 turns something happens and you're going to have things happen inside those 6 turns. For example, we have this eternal storm. This is going to be taking place in the realm. I'm going to roll a d6 to see when the storm moves. It's going to move on 3, so we're going to place that right up there on 3. Now, where is it going to be placed? That's an interesting question. I have this neat little dial here, which is called our Heaven's Compass. And you can kind of see there's a little clear thing here. We're just going to spin this. Let's see if I can actually hold it and spin it. I can. And it looks like it's going to be, let's see if I can read the numbers here, up at 87. We'll put on 87. That's where we're going to place our storm. So I'm actually going to take the token back and put on 87. So we're going to look around here and look for number 87. 87 is going to be located over here. So our storm is right here. And if you're ever in this area of the storm, when it's the as you play, you could lose a turn if this storm actually gets to you. It's bad news. Don't be part of the storm. Then we're going to place down some other tokens as well when we start. We'll get another D6, roll it up, and we got a 6. That is going to be the placement of our tax stone. We're going to be able to gain taxes whenever we get to the turn 6 on it. And I'll show you a little bit closer up there how that works. Next, we have the Keeper of the Seven Realms. It is always going to be placed at 55 right in the middle of the board. Of course, some stories may change that, but for this initial setup, that's where he's going to be. The last one we have is the blackboard tile. That's this one right here. We'll give that another roll. I got a six again on that. We'll place it in the same place as our taxes, which is right up there. And again, I'll show you that. Whenever we get to that token, side quests will become available for our characters, and they're going to be located right here in number 69, according to the rules for this scenario. So here's our initial six right here. And as you pass these, so if I go one, two to that storm, we'll move this up another six to the next two slot. Then we'll continue four, five, six. And once these we reach here, we're going to move those up to their next, next six spot. So that's how this is going to be working. Let's take a look at our heroes. The first one is Bragan. We're going to look at him. And each one, there's a ton of heroes in this. This is just one of them. We also have these right here. We have Kathmara, who is a special her thing is deep deception and support we have who else is in here lots of different guys we have the herald he's mainly a tank role as you can see here and of course this is all prototype material that is i'm got in front of me here this one's for bleeding evasion encounters that is going to be this character here but there's so many of these there's red hand he's more of a ranger we have a what is it magic attack and healing character here and we have Grimbad, he's a archer again, a shooter and explorer, and then we're back to here. 
So we're going to be playing with two characters because when you do play solo, you have to play with a minimum of two. The amount of characters also makes the game difficulty come to light. With two, we're going to be playing more on an easy mode. I'd want to actually get through this instead of not. So we're going to play on easy mode. You're looking at the hero board right here, which has everything we need. First off, we have our character standee. We have our dice we're going to be using for combat. Then we have potions. Each character begins with three different potions here. We've got red, blue, and green respectively. This is for health, this is for magic, and the green one is a potion medicine bag type potion. Then we have a backpack that can hold all of our stuff. This is our experience here. We're on level one and it, with the little indentions here, it shows us where these are. These player boards, from what I understand, are going to be two things thick, so these things are going to be like able to move around inside there, not going to be a single piece here. This is our the experience we're getting. Once it gets to 10 and we get to a location we can try to train, we'll just go to level 2 and we'll gain new abilities and new equipment. Then we have our attack stat here. We have our armor, our helmet, our movement, our magic, and then finally we have our health stat, our energy stat. It's at 12. Down here is locked energy. I don't know if we'll be playing with that because it looks like some big high numbers that we're probably never going to get to. We have our coin bag, which we're going to put all of our coins in. Up on top, we can wear two different rings, an amulet, and then we have a talent item as well. And I'll show you how this works in just a second. These are some of his cards. Of course, when the game is, comes to fruition, there's going to be a whole ton of cards, I'm sure, but I just have two in the prototype. These right here, this is kind of interesting. This is your equipment puzzle, and you're going to be gaining different weapons and armor and things as you play through the game, and you're going to have to make sure that you can puzzle it onto your character. Now, of course, because it's a prototype and we're only getting level one stuff, that it fits in really nicely, and it actually works out perfectly. Also on top of that, these are, like I said, will actually fit into these little holes here and stuff and not roll all around. But we don't have anything at the beginning. We have to go ahead and buy this stuff, and I'll show you how that works as well when we look down here at our player card. The first thing you're going to see is a story, kind of a little history of the character. Then it shows you a little bit about what he is going to do. This one is an attack type character, and it shows where it's going to start. It's going to start at number 14, and I get one skin per turn when I when picked up in your own castle. So I can keep gaining skins there if I wish to. Armor, I can create weapons from the resources for all heroes. It's going to cost me one action point for the other heroes. Here is an ambush. When I get ambushed, defense abilities can be used. Normally when you're ambushed, you cannot use defense abilities. And I have an immunity to fear. Over here is really cool stuff. This is where you're going to be going from level 1 to level 2 to level 3 and so on and so forth. And that's where you're going to be able to gain some of your abilities. So for example, if I want Violent Fist Punch, I want to learn this. It says I have to have a talent item level 1. So I need to try to get my talent item. In order to do that, I got to go to a trainer with two coins and one bronze, and I will be able to get Violent Fist Punch. That's what I'm hoping for. So we're going to probably try to take advantage of that because it would be kind of cool to get a hold of that. If I wanted to get my other thing, I have to go to a Weaponsmith, which will unlock this, which gave me plus five arm. It needs armor level one. So we have to find the armor level one one. Where is it? Here it is. Armor. Armorsmith. I need four Arcadia coins, a bronze and leather, and I get plus two. Oh, this one says plus five. Again, prototype. So there must be a couple things that are a little different. And it unlocks like a tree, which is this one right here. I'm going to go with the plus two. Plus five seems absolutely super powerful. Here's our next character. Notice she doesn't have any attacking or defense, but she does have a lot more magic. She is going to be a type of healer. She's going to gain cards such as Group Heal when she can find her first talent item, or she can do Earthquake if she can get herself a weapon. The dice from one of those two defense phases of this creature can be flung to the other side, turned to the other side is what I'm understanding how that works. And again, she's going to have that same type of puzzle as everything else. She starts at level 1, gets all the potions and everything, just like Brigand. They all start pretty much as the same. The only difference is going to be where their starting stats are. And you'll know where they are because you can look, and some of them have a more highlighted area here. And that will be a little bit different once, the pro once this actual game comes to fruition. Looking at her history and abilities here, she is a healer and elemental spell character. She starts in 41 and is able to gain one... Arnolet per turn when picked up in her own castle. 
She can make potions of energy, magic, and medicine from resources for all to create. It's going to cost one AP. I can gain magic potions for plus two magic with use, and I'm immune to elemental spells, which is pretty sweet. On top of that, if I can, of course, get those weapons and the talent, that'd be awesome because I get those abilities. And there would be more abilities if I'm able to unlock some of this other stuff, as I've mentioned, but we're probably not going to see too much of it. We have weapons. If I get to the weaponsmith, though, with two boards, or wood, I should say, and four coins, I can get that but that uh, earthquake spell, or I can get this group heal spell, which I think would be really cool, but I've got to get a leather, and I have to get to the magic witch with two more coins in that leather. I just mentioned trying to get to the witch, and here is where she would be located, number 99. The book tells me where every single location is and what you'll be able to find there. So our witch is going to be located here. She's got a cool looking house. It's really neat how you, it not only tells you where they are, but once you actually look at it, you're like, oh yeah, that's totally where the witch is going to live. And to get his talent item, we need to get Bregan over here to the trainer, which is located at 45. I guess he's training right there. He's got a nice little sword. He's ready to train you and make you better. And not only that, there's a well, you can wish for some stuff maybe. Well, okay, you really can't, but it's kind of cool it's on the board. Over here, I also have our destiny cards, our side quest, our loot, and our enemies. If you notice, they're all face up because they're all this on the back side like they are their prototypes. So I'm actually going to be drawing from the bottom for each of these. This at least tells, reminds me which stack is which as we're playing. So I'll be drawing from the bottom as we move forward here. Here is the beginning for chapter one. Now remember, this is a story that spans all upcoming games and books. So this is just the beginning. And certain decisions in this game can have an impact of things to come in the future, which is really cool how this works. Like I said, we started at level one, you noticed that, but you could get up to level 10. So this is a big game that's gonna expand and grow as we play through it. And the way we go through these chapters, it's gonna depend on how you did the chapters previous to see what actually happens. Let's start up here. It says 500 years ago, the kings of Arcandia were divided. Each kingdom pursued its own plans. And so there were battles among themselves for power and lands. In the chaos, the shadows grew. And in the back of the kingdom, the Dark Kingdom rose, led by the Dark King Brachnur. They gradually fell upon Arcandia. The unbridled violence and unconscionable atrocities created fear and dread in the inhabitants. That almost indomitable power threatened to take over everything. The Dark King, Brachnur, gathered the most powerful mages of the Dark Circle around him. He wanted to create an energy that would make every army Every show of power tremble. The skies turn black, green, and purple for weeks. Violent energy storms raged that could be seen far into the land. If he generated this energy, Arcandia would be lost. And so it was the King Argond, King of the Orient, who called all the kingdoms to him. And in the face of the looming disaster, united all the kingdoms in a graceful speech. Only together would they be able to liberate Arcandia and save it from the looming darkness. Many warriors lost their lives in huge and bloody battles. In the final battle, King Argnod led his mages to the Dark Circle to stop the proceedings. Elemental spells clashed with dark magic. The energy released there had never been seen before. And so it was uncontrollable, growing at lightning speed and unstoppable into a huge thunderstorm. This one absorbed everything around him, mages of the kingdoms and the dark circle, as well as the dark king himself. Then the storm discharged with a loud bang and disappeared into nothingness with everything inside it. Thus ended the great war and Arcandia was free. But this peace would last only if the kingdoms also remained united. This was only possible if one was to watch over all. The decision was clear, and the majority of the votes fell on King Argnod, who from now on was considered the first king of kings and made his throne in the morning lands the royal seat. A few months later, at the southern port near the ocean Syrian, the sky darkened for a moment, and with a loud bang, no one suspected or thought it possible, but what was disappeared into nothingness returned from it. The eternal storm of great war it now moved inexorably across the lands of the south. This time, no power seemed to be able to stop it. 
Another few days later, a being known as the Keeper entered this world. Life always seeks a balance. From the darkness springs light, and from destructive energy, healing energy flows. Thus, it is your task to keep the eternal storm trapped in the southern land and to protect Arcandia from greater harm. But this task comes at a price. It takes all your strength and to subdue the eternal eye. However, this makes her enormously vulnerable to attack. And that is why King Argnod spoke to his kingdoms. Seven of those kings decided to move to the southern land and settle there with their castles, fortress, citadels, and palaces to protect the keeper from any attacks. The old name of the region was since disappeared from the minds of the inhabitants. It now known only as the Seven Realms. In this particular chapter, we do have a bonus. The Keeper's power is able to move the Eternal Storm three times per chapter at will. Each time it's used, a pulse of energy is released within the field, paralyzing all creatures for one round. Continuing on, we now come to the King. There are always minor disturbances, but a major war is a long way off. One sunny afternoon, King Torgal rides off with his queen, Ingrid, and his bodyguard to hunt, but no one has seen him since. In the meantime, several days have passed. A search remains so far without success. The people are slowly becoming afraid because the news that the kingdom is currently without leadership is spreading like wildfire. More and more gruesome figures are roaming the kingdom, taking advantage of the current chaos. The Guardian of the Seven Realms now calls all heroes to her castle to discuss the serious situation. Each hero has the possibility to collect one resource per game turn from his or her castle. You can find these resources on the hero information page. In addition, various resources, places, and craftsmen have settled in the Seven Realms. Have a look at the Merchant Book Supply Chain now. And we have some basic rules. Everything that is picked up in the Seven Realms costs one action point. The same applies to purchases from merchants. Only the exchange between heroes does not cost action points. And only one resource of each kind can be picked up per round. If the action point increases, several different resources can be picked up and actions can be performed. Here's the book that shows the supply chains and the marketplace. It shows you not only what these are, but where you can find them as well. So if I'm looking for ore, I know this is really small, I apologize, I'm gonna look for the ore mine field and that is in number 20. So if I can get over to 20, I can gain an ore. So one thing we might wanna do is look at what we need from some of our characters. Like to get his talent, I need to bring one bronze to the trainer. So we might wanna to try to find bronze, it's right here. I have to get to field 105 in order to get a hold of a bronze piece and bring it to number 45. So it sounds like a little bit of a trek to do, but maybe our, our other characters might be a little bit easier. We have to find the magic witch. We know where that is. We got to get some leather. So we have to find a place where we can get leather. And according to here, leather is going to be found in 89. So we have to get from 89 to 99. Now that sounds a little bit more doable. Of course, we have to also remember where these people start. She starts in number 41, so that might be quite a ways away from that, but we'll see how it goes. And it's interesting because now I can also, if I want to, decide to just buy them instead of going to where those places are as well. On the other page, we can actually get jewelry as well. There are some rings and different amulets that we can buy for level one, two, and three. So this is, and this, this is just a tip of the iceberg when it comes to what you're gonna be able to buy and sell inside this game. I guarantee there's gonna be a lot more as this game goes forward. Continuing on, Meanwhile, the first bandits have settled in the Seven Realms and are raiding the surrounding villages. Turn the Celestial Compass and place the bandits using the long arrow and the numbers on the outer edge of the compass. And we're replacing them equal to how many characters we're playing and we're playing on easy mode, so we're putting down two bandits here. If the heroes get into a battle or the castle is besieged, we'll take a look at the battle and siege system. Notes. If two creatures meet in a field, a horde is formed. These then always move together. The status values are doubled. It has no influence on the dice. There are still one loot card per hero in combat. So we don't really want to be hordes. Horde to be bad news city. We will spin our little spinner here. And <laughs> I have to admit these numbers are really small and I can barely make them out. We have 101, so our first band is going to be on 101, and our second one is going to be on number 9, so 9 and 101. 
Nine is located way up there, so not pretty far from both of our characters. 101 could be a problem though. It's gonna be right here. Remember, we might wanna get some of this and get down here. That way we can <laughs> get ourselves that trinket. But look at this thing, this thing's in the way here. So I might have to try to take him out in order to get there because I really like to get a hold of my talent item for our character. We now come to our first task. All the heroes must gather within three turns in the castle by the lake at the Keeper of the Seven Realms. We're gonna use our history stone on field four and new game round begins. We'll place that token right there on four. And at this point, we will place our characters on the board. We have Bragan right here. He's gonna go in his castle. Now, this is of course prototype. It has been told in, to me that these are all gonna be like 3D models of some kind, which would be really cool looking. And here is our other character, our Miria. She's gonna be placed right here in number 41. So we have both of our characters on their starting locations, and we're gonna start the game by using our first action for our first character. One thing about your castle is it can be attacked and would be besieged by the enemy. Some, some parts of the chapter may tell monsters even go towards it. I don't know, we'll see how this all plays out. One thing you can do is protect them. You can build certain upgrades to your castle. And again, like I said, these will be 3D models that probably just be placed on top, which would make your castle look super cool. So that's where we stand on these guys. Let's start with Bregan. When it comes to figuring out who goes first, I believe it's just whoever wishes to go first can, and then continues on from there there's not really a set first player so we're going to start with Brigham you can check out his card the game round starts by drawing a destiny card one thing about the destiny cards is they can't kill characters we only have like one health and the destiny card says take three health you can't die from a destiny card we're like I said going to draw from the bottom here and see what we found we have found a spring festival despite the current unrest some villagers do not let go of their traditions the spring festival is celebrated and this boosts the morale of their heroes i get plus one ap for the current game round it is also possible to gain two resources from a field this turn oh wow that's really good so we'll place that right on top and we get an extra action point this turn on top of that we can grab lots of minerals and awesome cool things this is a really really good start looking at her board you're allowed to use one action point as you move across the land so she has four movements so we're going to move and as she movement i can use that action point to technically pick up things that are along the way which i can then use at certain other places she's going to go one two three and at that place, since there's a spring festival going on, she's gonna grab two boards and put them in her backpack, but she still has one more movement. I'm gonna move her to there for her first action point. Whenever you pick up resources from around the world there, you're gonna place them in your backpack. You can hold up to six things. You can stack up to the same resource four times, but you can't do that with stone. Stone you can only ever carry one of because, well, after all, it's stone. <laughs> it's real heavy. For my next action, I'm just gonna move up here. One, two, three, four, and we're gonna gather some of that iron. The reason I'm doing that is maybe I can sell it so I can get some money because I do need four gold in order to be able to make my first weapon over at the weaponsmith. I have the boards, but I don't have the money. So again, we'll place them right here in our backpack. Bregan will go next. He doesn't have to worry about any type of turn order. It's all determined by players. So I just chose to have our Miria move first. It could have been Bregan. It doesn't matter. It's up to the players who wants to go when. He's going to move one, two, three, four this way. And he's going to pick up some of these herbs. These particular ones can be used to make potions. We'll put those in his backpack and he'll continue on. He's gonna end very, very close to the same spot here. One, two, three, four, they're gonna land together. It's always kind of cool just to keep your team together because they can attack together. And if they get attacked, they can defend together too. So there's a lot of like good things in staying in a group like this. But of course, you do also wanna try to get out there and get some resources to help your person get better. So it's a fine line how you wanna walk and figure out what's the best course of action for your turn. I'm gonna grab my two boards and place them in his backpack and we'll be done with our first turn. Now that we're done, we're going to move our monsters around and also the storm. The way we do that is we're going to roll our, or spin our celestial compass here and decide which direction this person's going to go. It's going to go southeast. So north, south, east, going that way. If this creature were to end in a turn where another creature was, they'd form a horde. If they were to land on a place that you can gain resources for, that place is blocked, you cannot get resources. If it lands into a castle that your characters are from, it will besiege the castle and you'll have to begin combat there. If, of course, it lands in a place where a person is, it will also ambush that character right there. 
if it ambushes a character and there is a ranged character, because some of our characters are ranged, they could assist in that if they wish to. But he's just going to move southeast in that direction, which isn't going to pose too much of a problem yet. Our other bandit will, oh, I hit it, will go uh, north, it looks like. North is where it's going to go. It'll go right up there. Oh, no, it's on my leather. I need that. Next, we'll move our Celestial Storm and see where that goes. It's going to go north as well. We'll move it up there towards the wood. This thing will fire off when it hits that part on the time track, but for now, it's just moving around and potentially going to cause some damage when it gets to where it's supposed to go. Similar to creatures being placed in an area where you can gain materials, you cannot gain any materials, of course, where this thing is as well. We'll move our time stone up one, and we'll just begin the turn again, starting with a destiny card. We'll pick up our stack and just grab the next one underneath it and see what it is here. Let's see, we've got, we've got two of them here. Let's see, this one says, good breeding. The season breeding went so well that the leather worker produced a surplus of goods. He leaves this to the heroes to make more equipment. Plus one leather for all heroes. Oh, that's going to be really good. I think, what's his name? Needs leather, right? Bregan? Does he need leather? Yes, he does need some leather. No, we needed boards and bronze. Oh, I need a leather for Armira. Or Amira. That's fantastic. Now she has that. All she has to get to the witch and we'll be good. Each of our players will gain one of these leather tokens. We'll put that in their backpack. They all have three things in their backpack, so they can not carry, carry too much more. We'll move, I think we're going to move up here first. We're going to go one, two, three to right here, and he's going to go one, two, three on his turn to right there. So now we both have made it to the castle in 55, so we're going to continue on with the adventure. We're on chapter 1.1. The heroes reach the camper's castle. She welcomes everyone and speaks in a worried voice. The king has not been seen for a long time, and so we must prepare for the worst. The land is without leadership and open to the dark. The search so far has yielded no clues to the whereabouts of our king Torgal. I will now send my closest confidant and tracker, Sir Reginald, in to the Orient. We hope he will return with more success and glad tidings. Now hope lies in the ability of a tracker Sir Renegald. Place him on square 55, which is controlled by the players. Task, guide the tracker safely across the western borders. Field 37, 49, or 61. So we have to get him over there. He has two movement per turn. He must make it out of the game world within six turns. If a creature hits him, he is besieged for one turn. If he is not freed, then he falls and the adventure failed. Oh, barf. We don't want that. For the first screens are approaching, creatures that have sprung from the musty swamps and waters of the land to invade the Seven Realms. Place them on the following squares and move them per turn with a short arrow of the Celestial Compass and the Cardinal Points. They go one move. If a hero's castle is besieged, see the info about it in the glossary. We're going to be playing on easy, so we're going to be placing one at 37, 49, and 61. How ironic. That's exactly where I want to go. We are then going to put our time stone or our, our token up on the six fields forward and a new game round begins. We'll place these Screakers in 37, 49, and 61. We'll place our tracker right here. And the map is set up that as you move around, you should use the bridges as you're moving across the waterways here. You can't just randomly walk across water unless there's something that's allowing you to do it. A new round begins, so I believe that means we're not going to continue on with the ending phase of the game. We're just going to move right into the next new round, so we'll draw another destiny card here. It says, the charcoal burner is busy these days. The weeks of rain have contributed to the gro good growth of the trees. The charcoal burner has also benefited from this. He has produced a good surplus and spares it with the heroes to protect the seven realms. We get plus one charcoal for every hero. Oh, that's pretty good. I'm getting plus one to everything. I'm running out of space in my backpack. We'll place our charcoal right here. Remember, I can carry up to six different things, but only one stone, but I can stack these up up to four. So you can carry a lot in your backpack. The order in which we go is going to be the heroes are going to move first. Then after that, we're going to be able to move the non-player hero characters. That's going to be the second part. So I'm going to start with Bregan. He is going to move one, two, three. We're going to try to take out this Brigand. That is going to be the plan. 
At this point, I can either initiate combat or I can besiege the enemy and wait for another hero to come and help me out. Hey, come and help me out. Okay, I can do that. She, that is going to be his turn is done. She's going to come down one, two, three to here. And now we are going to make our attack against the brigands. The way combat works in this game is the first thing we're going to do is attack with our weapon against their armor value, which they're going to be rolling a black die. And I'll show you their card in a second. The second round of combat, again, we'll be attacking with our attack die, and they'll be using their helm die to try to block. Once that particular two rounds of combat have happened, we'll be switching, and at that point, they will attack me, and I'll be using my defense and then my helm, respectively. And when the attacks are made by the enemy against the helm and the armor, it will be attacking each character individually. So since we do have two characters fighting, if we get to that point in combat, I would have to roll the black die for him and then a black die for her to, against their white die to see how much damage we take. I'll show you all how this works. Let's roll it up. The first thing we're going to do is roll up our black die for his armor. Let's see how good his armor is. He got a total of four. His armor is a four. We'll roll up Bregan's attack now and see how he does. But before we do, we are going to roll the special die. Let's see if he uses his special ability here. We're going to roll it into the screen here. He got an attack. So he's not attacking right now. He's defending. So that would not happen. But if we look on the back of the cards, they have special abilities that would fire off based on that die. So if he was attacking, he would do a thief theft thing. And if he was defending, he would put, put up a palisade. Palisade. I'm probably saying that wrong. We're going to attack him now with Bregan's attack. Let's see what he gets. He got a 2 plus 1 is 3, so we haven't done any damage. But we get to use our other character as well. So 2, two plus 3 is 5, so we did 1 damage to him. He is down to 5. If we look right here, he's got a total of 6 health, 1 attack, 1 armor. We're going to gain 2 experience points, and we're going to be able to refresh 2 health points if we're able to take him out. He doesn't have any helm. Now, interestingly enough, this is kind of cool how they do this. From chapter two, we're going to get two times the stats. So these are all going to go up and I get negative one experience point. So they become a little bit more powerful, but I get less for them. Then from chapter three on, I'm not going to gain any experience points when I take out a bandit. So it's kind of cool how that eventually you can't just be picking off these little creatures that heal, gain experience points. Eventually you're just, they're just not going to be worth anything because you're just too powerful. He's going to use his arm or his, well, what do you call it, the helm value now. So we'll roll up his helm die. He got, wow, he got a six. <laughs> he got a six. All right, we're going to roll up his defense here. His defense, he did not get the defense die. He got that attack symbol again. We'll roll up Bregan's dice here. He got a two plus one is three. And then we'll roll up our means here. Well, that's got to go where we can see it at least. It's a four. So we got a total of seven minus six is, well, he's, we've taken two damage on him. So at this point, he is now going to attack us. So he's now going to take the attack die, and we're going to take our defense dice here. So we have two defense dice, one for Bregan and one for her. So she got a two, he got a six. We're going to roll up his attack dice here and see what he gets. He got a two and a shield, but we rolled them off camera there. He got a sh nothing and two. So he, we're going to add his attack, which is two. So that means Armia has taken one. She's going to go down to seven. At this point, we're both going to grab our helm dice now and roll them up yet again. We'll see what we get this time. I got a two, and let's see what he gets. He got a three. That's awesome. Let's see how the brigand did. The brigand got a one. Oh, that's so good. I love your one there. Let's see what his attack die thing is. Oh, he did attack us. But the funny thing is I don't think it's actually going to do anything. If we read the attack thing, it does say theft. The bandits sneak up on the heroes and pull the coins out of their pockets. I have negative two coins. Well, I don't have any coins right now, so that's okay. He can have that attack. That's totally fine. That is the end of our first round of combat, and we'll continue on combat until somebody goes down or there is somebody flees. These bandits aren't fleeing. They are going to continue to fight, fight, fight. So I'm going to grab my two attack dice. We'll roll up his defense dice here first and see what we get here. Roll them right here. We got a six, six. I got a six. I got his defense power. Oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. He got a defensive round. The bandits entrench themselves behind the palisade. And this makes them harder to hit. Only a skills of a range fighter specifically penetrates this protection. So it gets plus two armor and plus two helm. So I don't think I can't do anything to this six. So we're just going to roll it up again for a blind. I have to roll this die anymore because it's already in effect. So we'll roll up his armor here, his helm. See how that goes. He got a four. So he's got a six. Oh man, the only person I can hit him is Brigan. Brigan did not hit. He only got a two and she doesn't get any pluses. So she didn't hit either. Wow. We're going to move into his defense. Or now it's his turn to attack us. So I've got my two defense dice 
in his attack dice here. Let's see how his attack dice do. Well, actually, we should be rolling our defense dice first. We'll roll up our... <laughs> see, that's what you hear here. Oh, my gosh, you guys out of control. A bunch of bandits are going to take me out. Three out of two. That's no good at all. We're going to roll these up. So we did a total of four damage, and he stole more money from us. So that means I'm going to lose one for bringing. Bringing goes to 11, and Army is losing two as well. She's at five. Wow. Now we're going to grab our helm die. And hopefully that doesn't do too much worse. So she got a four and he got a one. That's not good for him. We'll roll up just the attack dice. He's going to do a total of four. So that means we're going to take three damage. One, two, three on Bregan. Bregan has taken three. All right, let's take this guy out. Let's for <laughs> this is out of control. This guy's got to go. Let's see what we get here. We got a one. Oh, that's perfect. That's going to be exactly what I want. And he got, we did get his defense. So he's got actually a three defense. I'm just going to turn this to a three so I can remind myself of that. He's got a three defense, not the end of the world. I could probably get through this defense. Come on, Bregan. Bregan got a six. So that's going to do three damage. So we've done a total of five to him right now. Let's see how she does. Let's get him. Oh, there's a six. Now, why didn't I roll the Vermeer? <laughs> <laughs> we could do that at the very beginning. He would be dead. We're going to gain our two experience points. We can divide that up however we want. I'm going to give one to each of them. So they both have one experience points. We get to 10. Then we're able to try to get to place number 45, which is the trainer. And we can gain the next level of our character. On top of that, every person in the fight does get to draw a loot card. So here's Brigand's loot card. He got one gold. And she also got one gold. So we'll discard those two cards and we'll gain the tokens. She'll gain one and we'll also give this to Brigand and she's going to take the one two healing that we get for killing off one of those brigands. Now I didn't really have any magic I could use because I don't have any of my powers yet but when I get my powers I can really start doing some cool things with her. At this point we're going to move this tracker. He's going to go one two that way. Remember we got to try to keep him protected so we don't want to probably get this way next to try to take these guys out. We'll remove them from the board. They're gone and we will now spin the wheel to see where all of these enemies are going to go. This wheel, of course, will be a lot easier to spin when it's a real thing instead of a prototype because that, this thing actually hits my hand sometimes. South. This one's going to move south. Then we'll go to that one. Oh, wait. I lied. You always have to start with the person on the lowest numbered square. So that's going to be our bringing up here. He's going to go south. At this point, we'll roll a spin the spinner again here. And we got a west. So north, south, east, west. He would go off the map. Enemies cannot go off the map. So instead, they're going to go in the opposite direction of what would place them off the map. Our next one is going to go east. That's kind of convenient. And our last one is going to go southwest. So it would be down here. So instead, it's going to go southeast right here. Our storm will move next. See how the storm moves? It's going to move north, which is just fine for me because I'm not going that direction. Now, I could use my ability from him, and I think we are. We're going to use my ability for him to move this one square over here, and then he's going to discharge that. Actually, I could move it here and discharge it and paralyze those enemies right there, which would be really good, I think. Let's do that. We'll move our stone up one, and we've hit that point where we're going to have to deal with the storm. The storm is going to discharge. It already did because of my moving it, so it's not going to actually do that this time, and we'll move into grabbing our new card. We'll draw the card from the bottom of the deck again and see what we have. We have Charcoal for All Heroes. Really? I shuffled these up. I got another Charcoal for All Heroes. We're not going to get Charcoal for All Heroes. We've already gotten that one. Let's get a different one. Let's just cut this thing in half and see what we get here. We'll flip that like that. Here we go. Let's see what this says. It says, Secret Letter. The heroes have learned a secret message, but the bearer has stayed hidden and does not make it through to the contested lands. Once of your heroes must pick up this letter within two game turns, it becomes part of their backpack and must find a place. Otherwise, it cannot be picked up. After that, you are free to choose when to deliver the letter to the destination. Put a secret letter on field one and take it to field 23. Okay, keep this card with you until you have delivered the letter. If you do, you get four coins and one gem. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. All right, I'm going to put this card up in number one. I don't know when we're ever going to get there, but who knows? Maybe we'll get there sooner or later, and then we'll get some awesome things. Now, that is only out there. I think it said for two turns. It's now our turn. I'm going to use her, her first. She's going to gather this. I think she's going to gather that and move one, two over to here. Leather is always good. She can always have lots of leather. I think she even needs two leather. No, she only needs one. She'll be fine. She, well, she, well, she's going to take that leather, though, because she could sell it for a couple of bucks if she needs to. So we'll put that into her backpack. And I think I'm going to have him do the same thing. He's going to grab some leather on the way here. 
And she's going to go besiege that enemy so that Bregan can come in and we can attack this one together. One, two, three. Now, it is paralyzed from the discharge here, but I, that just means I don't believe it's going to move. I believe it still gets to attack. I don't see why it wouldn't. So let's see what we can do about this thing. When we attacked with our brigand, I should have been using this battle board. They have these for the monsters when you fight them. You can place the things anywhere that they tell you to on this thing. So he's got eight health, two attack, two arm, and one helm. So I've put those on the respected areas of this board. We'll roll up his defense along with his special die here. And we're going to use a dice tray this time so I don't knock things all over the place. He got a two plus two is four. So we'll roll in brigand's attack. Brigand got two. That's, that's awesome. And then we'll roll up him two, so we get four. That was nothing. Let's take the black die out and bring in his helm die now and see how these go. He got a two again, but his defense did fire off. He did roll the defense. So we're gonna check out what the card says when you roll his defense. It says, defense round, screech. Nope, not the guy from Saved by the Bell. Glaring and piercing, it hurts you, the heroes all over their body. Concentration drops and they can barely muster their full strength. Negative two damage to both attack phases for the heroes. So both of my attack phases are gonna be at negative two. I'm already on my second one, so it's only gonna affect me once here. So he's got a total of three though, because he only has one helm, but I get negative two to this roll. So he got a five, minus two is going to be three, plus one is four, so I did do two damage. Let's see how she does. She got six, minus one is five. So four plus five is nine. Oh wait, he got a total of three, so that's three and minus two is four, so it did one. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I do the right math here, which is usually my not my strength here. I get five plus one is six, minus two is four. He's got a three, so I'm gonna do one. Did I do that right? This is two plus one is three, six minus two is four, so it's one. Yeah, something like that. I got pretty close. I probably did a little bit of math wrong, but that's okay. We're gonna move into his attack step now because I, <laughs> that was all I could do. I did do some damage to him. Let's see how he does when he attacks me. He got a five and he gets to use his attack power, of course. <laughs> Let's totally see what all these guys do. This is absolutely amazing. It says, Acid Cloud, a green and arcidic breath emanates from the Screaker's throat. A cloud of acid surrounds the heroes. The acid reduces the energy and armor loss portion protection round by round. Negative two armor for all heroes. Well, joke's on them. I don't have any armor. So I'm just going to roll them up and see how we do here. I've already got, I don't have any armor, so it doesn't matter. So we'll roll up our armor values and see how it goes. We'll roll up Bregan's first. Bregan got a six, so he's not going to take any damage. And we'll roll hers up next. She got a five, so she is going to take, she's going to take, I lied, they're going to take some damage because he's got two attack. So he's got a seven. So he is going to take one. Bregan's down to seven. And she's going to take two. She is down to five again. Wow, this guy's pretty rough. One thing you can do is if you get back to your castle, you can heal all your energy and magic without any problem there. We'll roll up his helm die now, or his attack die and my helm dies. Let's see how his attack is this time. Two. That's a good number. Two. Let's see what his helm die is. He got a five. He's totally fine. So he's got, a, this is a four though, remember, because he got plus two attack. And she got a one. She's going to take three. Wow. One. One, two, three. She's at two health. I can take this guy. I'm not worried. We can get him. We'll roll up his defense value. And he got he got a one. Oh, wow. That's awesome. All right. <laughs> it's clobbering time. Let's see how our brigand does. Our brigand does. Brigand got five, six. Minus three is three. One, two, three. He is down to three health. He does have two armor. Let's see how she can do against him. She got, oh, she got a one. <laughs> that's no good. We'll roll up our helm die now and see how that goes. He got a three again, so she, he's got a four. Come on, Bregan, let's take this home. Let's bring it home. Six, that's what I'm talking about. Six, seven minus four is three. One, two, three. Oh, we just barely got him. <laughs> I don't know how many more of those guys I can try to take out without having to heal my guys first. I do like how quick and simple combat is. It moves along really fast and you just get right back into the game. I am going to give him two of the experience points, as well, basically because he did the most, and she's going to gain one. We both get one loot card, so we'll take that. Bregan gets two gold and she gets one gold. Wow, he's got three gold and she's got two. We'll remove him from the board. He's gonna move two, one, two, trying to get over to that side over there. Hopefully this thing does not come down and try to get him. I guess I could move him down here. It is my choice. We're gonna move him that way. We'll now move our enemies in accordance to our little dial here. Here, let's see if I can spin it. Northwest, so he's gonna go northwest up there. Next, we'll move this one over here. We're gonna move it north. He's gonna go up one. Oh no, look, he might besiege my castle. That'd be bad news. 
I'll move the other one south. Oh, right into the storm. That's too bad for that guy. He's going to be stuck again. Oh, I forgot. He doesn't get to go because he was already zapped by this thing once before. Now i got to move the storm. Let's see where that thing goes. Southwest. North, southwest. That's terrible. He's right here. So he's stuck again. He can't do anything. When we started our turn after having the new companion join us, I should have been moving this another six spaces. According to that book, it did say move it down six and start the new round. We'll move this one space over and see what our new card is. Now remember, I'm probably never gonna get to that, but it'd be really cool if I could. Our next destiny card states, let's see here, uh, arming for war, even if it's hard in the seven realms, but the defense of the kingdoms cost the others and their citizens have to take care of that as well. However, this benefits the heroes. Five coins for all heroes. Oh my gosh, wow, that is has to be one of the best things you can possibly get. That's ridiculous. She's at seven coins and he is going to be at eight. That's amazing. I've gone ahead and fast forwarded our playthrough quite a bit. We've made it through a couple of the other parts of the first mission and we're actually getting to a boss fight here. So I thought I'd demonstrate that for you because this is gonna be really super cool. I think you understand how the moving around the board works, gathering resources and using them in certain things. And of course, as the story goes forward, they're gonna make you use the resources on the board to perform different parts of the quest in order to continue forward in it. And of course, if you don't finish certain parts of it, it affects the way the game plays out. I've been able to get to some craft areas. I've gotten some more experience points. We're still at level one, but I did get my weapon, so I did wasn't able to put part of the puzzle piece down. So we have four attack. We also got our trinket as well, which opened up our ability Violent Fist Punch, which gives us plus six on the first attack phase, and it also will interrupt the defense ability. I have to use this with two magic, and I only have two magic, so I'm only able to do it once, but hey, six is pretty good. Down here, we've got her weapon, and we also have her trinket as well, which unlocks both of her things here. She has Earthquake, the dice for one of the two defense phases of the creature can be put to the other side. Up here, I wanna show you that these are symbols telling you when you can use these. You could only use this during your attacking phase and it only works on one person, where her other ability here can be used to heal multiple people because it's called group heal and it can be used at any time. It says I get plus 10 energy for every hero. It, I need the talents and it costs me two magic. Now she has a ton of magic, so this is gonna help, especially since I have no defense. I'm hoping I can at least hold out and not get rocked. You can only use one ability per phase of the game, of the attacking phase. So you can either do it during the attacking of the arm or attacking during the helm, then you can use one of the abilities. Subsequently, you can only use one ability during your defensive phase, whether it be the arm or the helm as well. So she's all set to go for this battle, this super awesome boss fight. I don't know if we're gonna make it, we'll see how it goes. And we're gonna look at the boss now. Here's Impulsa, this is the boss we are fighting. It's got five attack, 16 defense, four helm and 35 health. I don't think we have any chance of defeating this guy, but we're gonna give it a shot. I, I have to admit, I don't think I play as optimally as I should. I didn't go after all the enemies on the board, just kind of try to do some of the missions as fast as I could. Let's see. Now it also has a supporter. Supporters are creatures that are helping the boss. And it has four defense, two helm and 10 health and no attack. The way that supporters work is they're gonna pass the numbers over here. They're gonna to add to these numbers on the boss. So it's sometimes best to take out the supporters first because it weakens the boss and be able to attack better against the boss at least. We do have, of course, our abilities that we can use. She can use this during the attack phase and this whenever she wants during either phase. Of course, I have to pay for it. And he also has his here that he can use during the attack phase as well. So we're going to go into our first round here. Let's see how this goes. I'm gonna roll up my defense dice for our, our Impulsa here and see if it's gonna be any good. We'll roll this up, see how it goes. I got a total of five plus its defense. That's out of control. This thing is gonna just work me. Let's see how this goes. We'll flip it over and its defense card here says, oh wait, it doesn't get its defense because I'm gonna play this thing. I'm gonna use all my energy to play this. It says attempts, uh, it interrupts the ability to defend. So it's not gonna do the defend ability and I get plus six on the attack. On top of that, I'm gonna use my Earthquake card. It allows me to use my two magic points. She does have eight, so she's gonna to go to six magic points, and she's gonna be able to flip this to the other side. So instead of it being a five, it's gonna be a two, which is way better. So now this thing only has a two defense, and it lost its defense die. And I get plus six to this roll for Bregan. Let's see how it goes. That, that was perfect. And then let's see how she does. She got a five. So she did five, six, seven. She has plus two. 
He's got two, four, five, six, so I did one damage to him from her, and he did six plus one is seven, two plus four is six, so he did one damage as well. That's that was that was that was atrocious. Let's see, <laughs> let's see how this goes. We're gonna roll up its helm die now. It got a four. And let's see where its attack of extra will die is. It did get its defense symbol now. Let's see how that goes. Let's just make sure this isn't firing off still. It says interrupts the defendability on the first attack phase. So it already used the first attack phase. Let's see how this defense ability here says. Defense round, lightning drome. His eyes widened open an energetic dome surrounded by lightning emerges from it. Only skills can penetrate this protection. 100% negative 100% effect on all dais attacks. Wow. Okay. All state changes are canceled. Okay. Well, we're not. I'm not even gonna roll my dice. I can't do any damage on. So that's the end of our turn. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how he does. Oh, that'd be pretty good. No, I still get to roll my dice because I got a plan. We're going to roll our two dice and see how it goes here. Because if I can get a five and a six on both of our dice, we can fire off a really cool ability. Let me show you this. So since we both have our level one attack, it didn't happen. I wish it would have. We can use our powerful first strike. Plus 10 damage to the first attack phase. That would have been the first attack phase. It requires all heroes must have weapon level one. And all heroes must roll the same number with the white dice. If I'd have got a five and six on this with our attack in the first round, just imagine how much damage it would have been. It would have been 10 plus his first punch, so 16 damage with this guy. That would have taken that thing out super good. And then, of course, the other 10 damage from her. So these are really cool because you get these for all different types. So you can even get one here, the power of the forest. I get plus 10 energy for every hero. It requires everybody to have a helm level three. So I have to have level three helms in order to do that one. Then there's another one as well that has to do with having armor. So it's really cool that you can have these neat, powerful strike cards come in. But as it stands, if that didn't happen, we're just going to get slaughtered here. Let's roll up our defense dice for our two characters here. We'll roll up this one here for her and this one for him. All right, and let's roll up his attack. <laughs> His attack is plus eight. This is gonna be good. Oh great, his attack plus eight plus six is 14 damage. All right, so he did 14 damage and I can be able to block three from her. That's not enough, she's gonna be super dead. And then he's also gonna be super dead. So sadly that didn't go very well for us, but I wanted to show you a little bit about what boss characters are like and I probably went after this boss a little bit too early. Bosses are cool. I love the fact that this, these helper things can help out this person and if you take these out, then it makes it easier to take on the boss. And I love having our ability cards. I would have been able to heal if I wasn't dead. She could just pay two, en two magic to give plus 10 energy to every hero. It's really, really cool. And so that is just a quick little boss fight. And well, quick little destroyed. I got absolutely rocked. That's okay. Eight attack. That's out of control. But, of course, I should have been able to have more defense. Like, I could have gone around and leveled up my guys if I had fought some more of my enemies, giving myself level 2, which then I could have completed the rest of our puzzles, giving ourselves, like, more armor on our helm. We also got plus 2 helm armor, plus 2 normal armor. So I could have done that to give myself a lot better chance fighting this guy. But I just wanted to quickly show you kind of what these boss monsters look like and just show you that this game can, <laughs> this game can be pretty challenging. It's pretty awesome just running around. Do the, and not only that, there are also side quests that I didn't take part in, and I'll show you what those are. Every six turns on the board, you're going to cross one of these tokens, which means you're going to be able to grab a side quest. And that side quest is going to be here for every character. They can choose to take one. If they do not take it on the turn that this passes while you're going through the turn order, you're not going to be able to get out. You're, this will just be done. So, for example, I could do this seed support. All I'd have to do is bring four coins to a farming village on field 482, and I'd get four herbs of my choice to make potions, and I get an extra experience points. So if I had been doing these side quests while I'm walking around, too, that would have been enough easily to get myself to level two, which then I could have used some of the resources that I had in my castles that you're able to store. Eventually, you're able to get these chests inside your castles you can store resources in, and you could use those to go to all the different places to build up your armor and your weapons and everything. I mean, she also gets an extra defense for her helm. She gets, she can actually get two different weapons at some point because once her puzzle here is complete, I mean, check this thing out. This thing's pretty cool. This is, I think, my favorite character. This one, once her puzzle's complete, she not only has plus two weaponry, but she'll also get an extra plus one from her other weapon. And then she'll get the plus two for her helm and her armor. It's actually, it's only plus one for her armor and helm. But she's able to get both those. That might have helped a little bit in that boss battle. Not to mention, I probably would have been able to heal, get some more 
hit points as well and going through this game and find like leveling up and finding different items that are going to be able to do that plus rings and things at that time we can get a lot of cool things that help out your characters but i do like this puzzle a lot and i like the backpack system there's a lot of neat little things going on in this game so there you have it that is the kingdoms of arcandia the seven realms this was just a quick prototype playthrough of how this game works this is going to be an immense game having lots of chapters and like i said this is only the first book of what they're planning to do so there's a lot going on and it's going to just keep on expanding i really like the character development i think that's pretty neat i like that puzzle system the boss fights are going to be super challenging and really cool i love those supporter characters that just add to it instead of having some giant amount of dice you roll it's always still that same system of the three dice that you're rolling and adding and subtracting i think that's a really neat system i like the crafting system you walk around grab stuff bring it to where it's supposed to go and craft it up as long as you have the gold and the resources to do it along with all the different things that happen inside here so some of the stuff we didn't get to see we had to bring this guy somewhere then on top of that we even have optional quests we could have done which is probably 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 into all else we have to fortify bridges so like i said well we're a little bit as we were able to take different resources from different parts of the realm and bring them to places so we can fix some of the bridges they had other monsters coming out. We could build up our towers and stuff, as I was talking about earlier. So there's a lot of different things happening inside of each of these chapters. And this is only chapter one. Chapter one is, it, and that wasn't even the main boss. He's right. I mean, we fought this guy. He was at four two, and there he get even more powerful ones up into seven one. I mean, there's that's that's really awesome that there's all these different parts just in chapter one. So imagine how much more there can be. Again, this is Kingdoms of Arcandia. I hope this helped you decide if you're interested in backing this Kickstarter. If you are, please check out the link below and you can go ahead and go from there. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to reach out to the designers in the Kickstarter forums or I might try to be able to answer some in the comment section below. If you did enjoy the playthrough, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell symbol so you know when the more playthroughs come out. Again, thank you so much for watching and if you're excited to see what comes next, then I need you to meet me at the co-op shop.